Not sleeping well sucks. It ends up being a catalyst for so many different negative things in the rest of your life. It makes your waking hours miserable because you just want to go to sleep and then you finally do try to go to sleep and you don't sleep and then it just becomes a vicious cycle. It probably is one of the worst things that you could experience and the negative outcomes from a long-term poor sleep are really terrible. So I'm always on the hunt for little ways to improve sleep. So full disclaimer, in no way, shape or form am I saying that using what I'm talking about is going to improve all of your sleep. But when you start looking at this data that's coming out, we have to take it a little bit to the bank and at least try it given it's such an inexpensive fix. So let's go ahead and break down the science behind tart cherry juice and sleep improvement. After today's video, you can save 25% off your entire Thrive Market grocery order. Okay, your entire grocery order. So you can go to Thrive Market, you can order whatever foods you really want in terms of how you wanna stock up your house. I'm pretty sure they even have some tart cherry there, which is pretty awesome. But your entire grocery order, you'll save 25% off. Then it gets delivered to your doorstep and you have it in a couple of days and wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, you're done. Okay, plus you get a free gift when you use that link down below. So that link saves you 25% off your entire grocery order, plus you get a free gift. So just try it, give it a shot. If you don't like it, it's not a big deal. You can at least get one of your grocery orders through it and if it doesn't blow your mind, then don't do it. Okay, that link is down below. Let's break it down with the science. So this first study looking at tart cherry juice was published in the European Journal of Nutrition. It wasn't a huge study, but it did take a look at subjects that were consuming tart cherry juice versus a placebo for seven days. Those that consumed the tart cherry juice ended up having significantly higher levels of melatonin from baseline. Their melatonin levels ramped up, whereas the placebo group didn't really have a ramp up in melatonin at all. Now, the cool thing is the melatonin levels still stayed within the natural range. They didn't skyrocket up above it. And that's some of the concern I have with melatonin supplements, right? Is because we only produce like a quarter milligram of melatonin. So why do we need 10 milligrams where we're like super saturating everything and maybe burning out a receptor, right? So being able to get it on the high end of our natural range is a very good thing. But additionally, we can't just look at melatonin. We actually have to look at sleep, right? We have to look at how it improved. Well, all the parameters of sleep improved and they did not improve in the other group. The hard part with this study is there wasn't a whole lot of mechanistic data to look at and it was relatively small. It could have been a number of things, right? And just to put it out there, tart cherry juice isn't super, super high carbohydrate. Okay, you can find tart cherry juice that is relatively low carb and you don't need much. The next study I'm gonna reference did use a fair bit. Okay, it ended up using 240 milliliters twice a day, but if you're doing low carb, you could probably drop that down and still get similar effects. But if you're not doing low carb, you're looking at a relatively low carbohydrate fix that isn't going to be super, super high glycemic in the first place. Anyhow, let's break down this next study because this is where it gets interesting. This study was published in the American Journal of Therapeutics and it used polysomnography where it actually looked at a real sleep study, their sleep waves and everything like that to look at how their sleep potentially improved. Okay, so in this case, two weeks of tart cherry juice utilization, 240 milliliters two times per day for two weeks compared to placebo. Okay, results were fascinating. The tart cherry juice group ended up having an increase in total sleep time by, drum roll please, 84 minutes, almost an hour and a half more sleep time. If you're someone that has been accustomed to sleeping six hours for most of your life, well, bada boom, you now just put yourself into the normal range. You are now at seven and a half hours. That is pretty darn fascinating. Okay, and that is nothing to sneeze at. That's not insignificant data. We may not know 100% the mechanism. We may not know what's going to be small data, but it's pretty earth shattering when you start looking at other studies with tart cherry and you see there is an increase in melatonin, is an increase in subjective and some absolute sleep scores. And then you start seeing this. So what is the potential mechanism? Well, researchers with this study, they noticed a few things, okay? They did notice that there were higher levels of B2 in the brain. Now we'll talk about that in just a second. So this is called a procyanidin. So procyanidin B2 can modulate inflammatory responses in the brain. Okay, neuroinflammation is a very complicated subject that is far beyond my pay grade, but neuroinflammation, essentially, you have to think of it as static. Okay, if you have a lot of static in your brain, signals and neurotransmitters and all these junctions are fuzzy. 
Okay, it's like driving across a bridge with a bunch of fog. You just don't know when the bridge ends, you don't know if there's a gap in the bridge, you don't know if there's a hole and you're gonna fall out, and Arnold Schwarzenegger's gonna scream that the bridge is out. You, you just never know when it's gonna happen, right? So that's what's happening in your brain when there's a bunch of inflammation. It's the simplest, most colloquial way of putting it. But what they did find is that this B2 seemed to reduce the inflammation, but it also increased tryptophan availability. What does this mean? Okay, well, you've probably heard me talk about tryptophan is an amino acid. And what happens is tryptophan, via what's called tryptophan hydroxylase, converts into serotonin. Okay, that is a neurotransmitter that allows us to sort of feel good. It's the feel good neurotransmitter. But serotonin also triggers uh, melatonin. Well, it doesn't trigger it, it actually converts into melatonin in the pineal gland. The pineal gland then releases melatonin. So by increasing tryptophan availability, you're making more tryptophan available to convert into serotonin to convert into melatonin, which explains why there was this increase in melatonin levels just to the high end of the natural range. Okay, When you look at how tryptophan plays this role, alongside the neuroinflammation modulation, think about it. You now have more of this neurotransmitter that is sort of a messenger for the signal, right? It's a messenger to transmit across the synapse. Well, you've also reduced the fog so that synapse is like a bridge, right? That, that serotonin, that's gonna be a neurotransmitter that sends a message from one side of land to the other side of the land. It like is the bridge. It's like a gondola and this goes across this canyon. Okay, but if there's fog and neuroinflammation, the serotonin can't really get across. So not only have we reduced the fog, but we've also made more gondolas. Okay, so instead of having one gondola that can barely get across this foggy gap or foggy canyon, you now hypothetically have 100 gondolas with less fog. So you see what I'm getting at here. Now this is purely mechanistic and we don't know absolutely, but the data is pretty darn interesting and it's something that I've personally tested out. And even in short term instances, like three or four days, I notice at least an improvement with how quickly I fall asleep. I can't speak to my own polysomnography because I haven't had it done, but I definitely fall asleep faster. Anyhow, as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you tomorrow.